Hi everyone, this is James with Blizzard Lighting, and this is the first in a series of videos for Eclipse DMX software. And this first video, we're just kind of give you a brief overview of uh, you know what things are, where to find them, stuff like that, and uh, maybe try to throw in a few little tidbits of information uh, here and there. So let's just get right into it. Uh, the software is mainly comprised of two sections. Uh, well, three really. But the main two are the playback side, where you have all your buttons and stuff. And, you know, pages of buttons and stuff. Add a new page. And then we have the programming side, which is where you have your fixtures, where it's where they get patched, it's where you're able to see them and to uh, select them, to control them, program them, stuff like that. And you can even, you know, <coughs> select the scene and then modify it live on the fly type deal. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and actually create our own new file. This is the default file that loads up with the program. And uh, so we're not going to really want to mess with it a whole lot. So, I mean, it's really just for example purposes. So, what we're going to do, uh, you'll have a row of buttons up here. And by the way, in, uh, as a little quick note in these videos, the red burst on my mouse is left click, and the blue burst is right click. So, just remember that uh, if you're trying to figure out what did it click on? What? You know, it's left click. Right click, left click, right click. Alright. So, what we'll do is uh, you see you have a row of buttons, you know. Uh, power, new, since we want to create a new file, we'll click this one first. Click OK. And we're just going to hit cancel because we don't really want, we didn't want to save this one, it's already saved, you know. And so now we have a completely blank uh, file. And so, for them, we don't have any fixtures. So, to patch on our fixtures, let's go to the patch button here and select load slash patch new fixture. And we're going to select blizzard lighting because you know, it's the best one, you know. So we're going to go ahead and pick some uh, flurry Q 12 channels, the RGBW small wash that we have from Blizzard Light. And we'll select those. Start them on address one. And say we have four of them. <coughs> we'll also see options for inverting the pan or tilt. As well as uh, allowing the fade times to apply for the dimmer channel. CMY, I wish, right? That'd be cool, right? CMY LED product. Or RGB, or if we if the software now supports RGBW, RGBA, and RGBAW. So it supports whole, uh, supports whole color mixing spectrum that LEDs have uh, available in the market today, and as well as fade, pan, and tilt. So I'll just go ahead and do load slash patch new. I'd like to auto create fixture groups for the fixture brand you're currently loading. Yes. Four Flurry Q12s loaded. Alrighty, looks good. So you see that, um, you know, we still don't have control of anything, you know, because there are, you know, faders aren't there, there's nothing you can do in the joystick window. Because Eclipse relies on you, the programmer, the user, to select your fixtures that you wish to program. As soon as you select them, then you'll, their DMX attributes will be loaded up into this uh, this palette window where we have a whole bunch of different things like uh, color mixing. Uh, this little checkbox here enables, so as of right now, it's just red, green, blue color mixing. No, red, green, blue. If you want to enable the white or amber channels. Use white, amber, channel, and color mix. Just turn that on. Let's go back and make like a nice orange, you know, light orange. Go back to the faders. And you can see it's using, you know, 
red, green, blue, and the white. You're not going to see the white output because these three colors mix it. But you will see, you know, that the white channel is being used. So then that's something you can turn on or off anytime. So it grabs the white channel and it puts it alongside the color, you know, in a linear matter. So that way, you know, this isn't going to use white, but this is, you know, so you leave it checked, uncheck it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, it's gobo. If you had gobos for moving head spotlights, they'd be here. Shutter, beam, you know, shutter close, dimmer, function, rotation, speed, position, groups. Groups are handy, you know, if you want to select all of them, boom. I'll select just the even ones, which would be two and four. Or select just the odd ones, one and three. And all of your groups will will appear in this section, um, depending on which fixtures you have selected. If you had two different types of fixtures selected, they should both load up here. And uh, we'll be going more into that a little bit later. So uh, now we have moving effects. Let's go back and select all of them. Moving effects where you can, you know, there pan and tilt shapes that you can generate. Uh, you know, honestly, a lot of these look really cool. You know. So you can really just sort of uh, click on one, you know, this uh, offset, you know, adjust it between one fixture or two fixtures or three fixtures, and so on. There's RGB uh, effects. You can do color chases. We can speed them up here. And this uh, this playback speed fader here affects both the pan and tilt and the color at the same time. So you can see the see these are going back and forth just uh, nuts. So we're gonna want to slow it down a little bit. And the thing about this is what's great about Eclipse is you know you could have your pan and tilt going really slow, but then your color chase going really fast just by simply splitting up the two. You create a scene with uh, just the position stuff going, then another button with just the color mix stuff going, then you can adjust the speed accordingly between the two without having to find a good common ground and go, okay, well this is too fast for this, but too slow for this. What am I supposed to do here, you know? So that's one little, one of those little extra tidbits that I said I'd tell you about. Um, so we'll just hit clear all. And, you know, you have, uh, your faders, you know, for stuff selected. Joystick, miscellaneous three, four, position, etc. And so, but let's just go ahead and f go ahead through the rest of these buttons, and then we will continue on. Um, we have edit fixture, which will allow you to select the fixture and check it out, and edit the traits that way it matches how you want to use it. But most profiles are usually good to go, so you really shouldn't have to worry about that. And there's patch. You create a new fixture profile in case you, you know, want to just, you know, dig in and learn it yourself. Uh, you're more than welcome to try that. Uh, you know, if you modify any built-in profiles, uh, just remember to save as, you know, instead of overwrite, because otherwise, well, you have to email us for a fixed profile, you know, and, which is fine. We don't mind doing that, you know. <laughs> Um, there's load, which will take a previous file that we've had done. We can load it up at any time. And there's save, so we can actually save this show file, which is a good thing to do after you get going, uh, just so we have something saved. And then we're just going to save it as Eclipse Tutorial, since I, we already had one. Save, replace it, yes. And then we can now we can even back up the show. And what it does is it creates a, a simple folder in your C drive for you to zip up and then send off to anybody. Anybody else can load up your show on their computer, or you can you know back up your show file from you know your home office computer and then uh, restore it. Uh, on the computer that's going to be actually used at your gig, venue, show, whatever. You know, so you can you can program at home and stuff like that, then tweak it 
when you're at the venue. Um, so those are two good options. You also have a uh, 3D visualizer that you can load up and uh, you know, put some pictures on a truss and just kind of get a basic idea of how things might look You know, if you set it up that way. Um, we also have settings which allows you to set up a password for a programmer and the user or just user only or just simply just for playback. So, you know, set up a DMX refresh rate. Usually this is 40 hertz is the standard. Um, you know, you can uh, adjust the timing a little bit, but we we prefer to just leave it as standard. If you have any troubles with the, the if you think it's, if you're having any troubles with the DMX timing, uh, please just shoot, shoot us an email at support at blizzardlighting.com and let us know what you think your issue is and uh, we will help you out as soon as we can. And it's usually, you know, within 10 minutes of sending us an email, we'll get back to you, uh, you know, Monday through Friday. So, or we can also select the default show file to load up that way, you know, if, uh, if you don't really want to open up a new program every time, they go, okay, which file was I working on last time, and I didn't really fully save it. You can set up the file that you want to load by default every time. Um, MIDI. The software uses MIDI triggering, and it's really cool. Um, so you can actually, you know, if you use like a USB MIDI device, like the uh, Coke Nano series, or Akai APC, or... Um, uh, any any USB MIDI device is you know usually supported, and if it's plugged in and recognized by your computer, it'll show up in this list. Or you can even disable, you know, MIDI. And so that's the settings. It's also help, which is takes you to the product website, opens up the help files, and opens those up in a different window. Um, which isn't displaying right now because I have two monitors, so... But, uh, oh, oops. Or there's credits. Um, and the credits will show you the version date, or version number. And uh, right now we're on the current one, that is currently on our website, which is 1.1.1. .1 so, close that. And... So, that's all the basic functions from up there. Uh, playback mode is, you know, you, you can have several pages of playback buttons for different areas of playback. Um, we also have a master dimmer right here, which can be used, um, you know, at any time, live on the fly. We have a fog haze controller, which if you have a dimmer, Dimmer, uh, no, I'm sorry, not dimmer. Fog machine or a hazer. Uh, patch them with DMX. You can, uh, when you use the profile in our library, to patch in that fog or haze machine. Um, this fog haze controller is going to see that and it's going to uh, grab those channels that it's going to use for fog or haze output and the fan or whatever. And it's going to allow you to control them uh, at any time from these sliders right here. And uh, we even have a timer, which is really cool. I've never seen it in any other program um, before, but uh, I could be wrong. Um, so you, you can enable uh, a haze machine or fog time timer, uh, fog haze duration, uh, interval B, you know. And it's going to do that at every interval that you select. So it's going to go for 12 seconds every 0.72 uh, minutes, I believe it is. And it's going to go at these uh, parameters for the DMX channel. So if you could do blast fog full 255 output. And then fan speed at that at that interval, or you know you could just simply turn this off, just blast it on your own anytime you want, just by clicking the fog slash haze button right there. So it's really neat, really really neat. Um, 
Let's see, we're gonna go over to the beat detect and go to the stroke control first before we go and get into the BPM. Stroke control gives you, you know, intensity, you know, of the of the, the dimmer channel, and then the chase speed, and then there's the rate of stroke. So if you hit chase all, it's gonna it's gonna do like a shutter chase. If you hit rate, you know, it's gonna do an intensity chase too. So it's really just something that's really neat. You gotta just, you know just play around with it, and see what it does for you. Or there's strobe ball, and the strobe ball will work with what is currently playing back in the scene, or what is currently selected in the programmer side. So uh, strobe ball, you know. So there you go. And BPM is right here by start audio in. Uh, it's gonna go by your computer's microphone, and you can adjust the, you know, you can actually set it up to go off the microphone from your computer, and you can do response time, low, medium, high, extreme, trigger type, BPM adjust per trigger, BPM adjust with averaging, threshold, it's automatic or manual. Music style, you know, there's universal, Latin, rap, house, trance, dance, disco, country, eh, rock, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, the 0, 2, 4, 8, and 10 buttons are, it's gonna skip uh, detecting beats, you know, every 2 beats, every 4, every 8, every 16, oh, 16, not 10, sorry, 16. And what that does, that allows so that way your moving heads or, or anything that has movement isn't going to go nuts when you have a really fast BPM. It's going to average out those those uh, beats and then you know make it a little bit more smoother and stuff like that. So that's something you can pick if you don't want it to be respond too crazy to high BPM uh, music. Uh, you can also manually adjust the tempo. and all that type type of uh, fun stuff. Uh, volume sensitivity, you, know, you can even hide this at any time, bring it up. So this is you know this is pretty much the end of the first video. Uh, we have a lot more coming so uh, stay tuned and uh, check it out. Let us know what you think in the comments and all that stuff.